Let's take a couple of quick techs, sailing, astrology, mathematics, and then I think I'll probably unlock education or gunpowder. Muskets are really cool. What boosts am I going to get? Guilds, hunting, and buttress. Nice. My first industrial zone is finished. And there you go. Look at this. A tradition of industry. Build my first plus four industrial zone in the medieval era. Well, it's more than plus four and it's before the medieval era. I'll take that as a win. Here's the best bit. A man at arms has appeared. 4-3. Washington. On the completion of that industrial zone, I will send you over as quick as you can, but it has plus five combat strength. Oh, it's going to be so tough. Capital, I'm going to need you back that up quickly with a workshop, then I'll get a second one. Let's just cement our victory as well. Another library? Because walls have annoyingly appeared in this city, I'll get a siege tower so I can bypass them. Oh, the pikeman has just wandered off somewhere. Don't ask why or how, just accept the fact that it's gone. That is what I say. We've got an opportunity to attack this city with a little bit of force whilst the pikeman is out. Look at that, the walls are coming down way quicker now. My second industrial zone has been finished. Siege tower in place. Rearrange the troops ever so slightly in order to make sure the crossbow can level up safely. Attack, attack, and then bypass walls with man at arms one and two. Here we go, we're starting to really put the pressure on now. There's the other city to cross the water. I reckon we can actually get Cree to loyalty starve themselves. Ten population city, civil service. And here is Sun Tzu, my second great general. Amazing. Dido is the one at war with Cree, so would you like a military alliance? Oh, they would, of course. Of course they would. I feel like my army, once it's done in this area, either I can continue going forward and attack Vietnam, which is a huge trade partner for me, or they can go in the other direction and head to Byzantium. I think I'm going to go to Byzantium next. So I'll offer Vietnam an alliance. Would you like an alliance? What sort would you like? Cultural. All right. Research for the Ottomans. Excellent stuff. You see, look, this is all lovely. We all get together. It all works out. Everyone's happy. It's not quite cheaper to buy the workshop rather than the man at arms, but the workshop gives me more production and a great engineer point and I want to get a monopoly on all the great engineers ideally so we'll figure that out. The other thing I'm also thinking about is a really weird thought but look at where these ley lines are. This, that would be an amazing harbour. Plus four, nowhere near my capital. All that. I do want to build mausoleum so maybe I'd end up building mausoleum on this tile? Hmm, both, both are good options to be fair. Though this one actually I can chop out the harbour can't I? Yeah let's do that. I think with that the walls are falling. Yep they are. Means hopefully my horse can just run in. It can indeed, and actually, that's the great library we've just stolen. Ooh, it can have books in it. And their remaining city is on minus 14. I don't think I'll even need to take Cree out of the game. That's both very useful and very embarrassing for the Cree. So as is usually the case, the barbarians are by far the bigger threat here. They have so much of a bigger army. <laughs> Try and fight through where we can. In fact, yeah, we just punched straight through, which is good. And now my crossbow can get involved. Oh, I could use Boudicca. I could use Boudicca to steal a couple of catapults. Ooh, which is better to have the great general or the catapults. I've only got two great generals, so it feels like a bit too... I'm, no, I'm going to keep Boudicca. If it was later in the game, I'd be tempted. And now my entire new army, four mana arms that have all just been built in the last few turns. Oh, this is a road that I built earlier. And it goes all the way through to Adrianople. Ah, I love it when a plan comes together. The medieval era. Oh, and look, everyone apart from Byzantium is in a dark age. Okay, let's see just what chaos this has unleashed on the world. The Vietnam have only lost seemingly one city, as has the Ottoman Empire, although they only had four, so they don't really have as many to lose. Oh, Carthage has been lost. Okay, that's generally okay. That's generally fine. I can deal with one three city. It's going to provide a huge amount of loyalty pressure on me, but it's just for one right now. My second industry, this will give my capital more culture, as well as a bit more food and production and all the good stuff. World Congress time. Dido, I think, has a religion. Yes, Judaism. Let's vote for that one. And what's at the bottom of the thing? Ah, oh, spices. I'd rather they didn't get banned, so I'm gonna just vote for something I don't have. Like diamonds, I don't think I've got. No, I do have citrus. See if that goes through. It's unlikely to go through. Jade. Oh, I didn't have any jade anyway. Fantastic. Oh, we got away with that. I'm desperately trying to get to 100 science by turn 100. It's almost about 77. We're doing pretty well. I'm actually leading tech by four techs. Wow, it just shows you the speed of this start. Here's an armory in Washington. I'd like a harbor in this city, but you know, feels like I can build quite a few wonders in my capital for dirt cheap. Apadana? 
No one's built it, so I will. Military emergency. Why did you have to declare that just before your inevitable end? Come on. Oh, there we go. It failed. For you. I was worried we were going to have to fight that one off for a bit, but no, we're all good. Here is Hildegard. Now, the only holy sign I have at the moment is a one adjacency. I don't think it's enough, so I'm just going to leave her alone with my prophet forever. Never able to join him with anything. An eternal wait. Oh, dear. And Kree is now officially out of the game. I'm very sorry but america had to grow five era score for that which is wonderful a few grievances with people but not many most importantly look how many ley lines we have this already is a plus four campus this is a great yeah great addition to my empire okay we're just gonna spend a little bit of time fixing everything look at all the nitre one two three sources of the stuff that's mad domination is definitely the way we're looking to go today plus look at all this coffee i wonder how much of this i have to improve to get a decent monopoly mercantilism will have to be quite an important civic for us so that we can work out exactly how many copies we need to get a monopoly of something. Byzantium were just waiting for me to stroll in. They had 18 strength cities and now they've built a single mad at arms and now they're really tough. Never mind, still sending my ginormous army down south. Anyway, most exciting thing, we're a monarchy now. Praetorian Guard is still very good. Monumentality is useful. I like keeping that in. Free inquiry would be fun though. My campuses are everywhere. That's a significant chunk of gold, but I think I'll improve my land first. Let's get limes in and equestrian orders because I'm getting more troops by the day. Oh, hello. My man at arms is now being surrounded and killed by about a hundred barbarians. Well, this invasion of Byzantium may need to take a little bit of a, well, diversion. Let's kill that barb camp quickly. All of these improvements in the lands that I have acquired. Anyone want to buy them? Yeah, you do. Come one, come all. America is open for business with 191 gold per turn. Excellent. It means we can just buy in workshops immediately for double three troops. It's, it's amazing. Oh, that's a big old dust storm. It's damaging all of my tiles. I've just put all these down. Never mind. Professional army and retinues. It's always fun to pop these cards in just before you unlock muskets. Actually, that's a point. I can upgrade in Preslav. I don't need to go back to my own land. I can just go back to city-state land. That's handy. Meet up with Sun Tzu. Oh, Sun Tzu is going to be very out of date by this point. We're going to have to get another great general, aren't we? All right, let's, let's keep that in mind. For now, Sun Tzu's working. Either way, Singapore, now on side. Oh, what's that? Gunpowder and a three musket. Excellent. I'll back that up with a workshop and get another three musket. Oh, Lincoln. Never stop being so amazing. Let's get the government plaza sorted. We are starting to build my amazing triangle of industrial zones. It's going to take a little bit of time, but I'm very close to making that delicious. Plus, look at all these troops upgrading to muskets as well. Oh, four tiles down damaged five population lost yeah i know i just conquered all this territory but i think it's now officially worthless Apadana in my capital. It's got space for more great works, which is lovely. It gives me envoys, which is lovely. And it means that I could do the almighty, the sacred, the perfect Kilwa Apadana in the same city combo for another five envoys later. Oh, it's beautiful. I love that combo. Let's get mausoleum first though. This beautiful harbor can't wait forever and it can be built in two turns, which I find delightful. Education. All right, let's get castles, printing, and then we'll think about getting some trebuchets for siege tactics. Washington has finished the harbor and the last Cree city on this tiny island did flip to me in the end, which again is more era score, which I desperately need to keep accumulating because I desperately think that with 12 cities, I think a dark age would cost me five of them and that would be brutal. We'll just have to see, won't we? We'll just have to see. Are you building Stonehenge? That is bold. That is very bold and I respect it fully. Oh, hang on. This harbor is going to be good. Yep, that's a plus six because of all the ley lines. Oh, that's really good. I know ley lines aren't the best improvement, but there's so much fun. I wish, I wish the others were as fun. Now that I've got universities, let's pick up Adept so I can start building alchemical societies. What was my favorite thing about 350 BC, you might add? It was my alchemical romance. That's what it was. Welcome to the beigey brown parade. It's, it's not what you think it is. Actually, hang on. I'm going to rush through mausoleum first and I'll save some gold up for the beautiful mausoleum. People are still buying my strategics. I am very much the world's supplier of stuff. I'm not entirely sure what it is I sell. It's just 
general stuff everywhere. All the stuff. Grants on Pingala. I'm going to get that before Researcher, weirdly. Because the Alchemical Society will give me tons of points across everything. And we're really monopolizing quite a lot of stuff now. Scientists, merchants, engineers. Loving it. No one minds it when I lie. Let's see if we can get a military ally joint war going. A formal war. They see, look, that's much better than the surprise war that I would have declared otherwise. Ottomans, they don't really want to get involved. Oh, they kind of do. Some coffee and they're in. They're like, yes, a morning brew. War is worth that. And <laughs> absolutely is every time. All right. They've just founded another city for me, which I am finding delightful. My muskets are all beautifully protected by my military alliance, which is great. I'm going to let that man at arms go back into the city because I'm going to see if I can just kill the city with it in it. Bit of government rework quickly. Don't need these two. Going to get rid of monumentality briefly. Diplomatic League has to go in temporarily. Craftsmen will probably never leave my government and Limes is going in because I really need walls. But now I can give an envoy to Auckland for two envoys. Pick Auckland up. Not really going to be my thing this game. But the extra production for factories, that's something I can get behind later. And then Zanzibar, I would love that happiness of Oh yes. Oh, the walls are going up, are they? And luckily for you, my muskets attack with 60 strength and I am ready for this war. One, two attacks, and then three for the take. That was easy. There we go. I mean, I've even got two more sources of incense and some spices. All of these are plantations. And this is right on the front line. This is not good. I am very much going to regret trying to build all these, but you know I'm going to. Oi, leave my muskets alone. All right, they're only just learning to battle cry. They're so young and helpless, come on. Oh, El Cid is the next general, former core. I like that. And this is the medic. Can I be bothered to get this medic just waltzing around with my armor? Yes, I can for a bit. I'll pop him in a bit. He's a test of patience, that scientist. How long can I stand to bring him around my army before I get bored and then just use him for that sort of general effect if it's a little bit worse? Turns out the answer is normally a lot less than you'd think in terms of timings. I get bored very quickly. Oh, the healing is amazing. Between my Golden Age policy, which is plus 10 per turn, and then this scientist, which is 20 per turn. That's a plus 30 bonus on healing. Yeah, we're going to be fast friends. Fast friends. And everyone's upgrading now. Let's go take this city. I even got a knight arriving at the party. And I want to get a kill with this knight as a priority because then I get military science boost. And then we can unlock line inventory. Ah, oh, so balanced. Here is a thousand gold. And because I have Pingala in this city, I get one. One, two, three types of points doubled. So instead of one engineer, one merchant, one scientist, I get two engineers, two merchants, and two scientists. Oh, the monopoly of great people. It just continues forever. Oh, I just made all that. Why is it the floods target things you literally put down the turn before? Uh, what is... I, I swear that's a thing. Ah, oh, dear. Anyway, researcher. With researcher, we are well above 100 science. I didn't really point it out. We were at about 90, 95 by turn 100, but we've pushed above that point now, which is great to see. Oh, that was easy. Okay, they just threw a unit into my knight. And that gave me the upgrade. I didn't even <laughs> literally do anything. Huzzah! Also, mausoleum in my capital. That's another two envoys. But now, the great engineers all have an extra charge. What great engineers, you say? Ursa, you haven't had any yet. Well, to whoever said that in the back, sit down, take notes. Because look, along with printing, there's a convenient engineer. Yay! Okay, right, we got three charges towards wonders now. And there are some really good options. There are some really really good options here. Okay, Hanging Gardens. I'm going to pop Hanging Gardens down because I like the idea of a three-turn wonder. Kilwa? That's a great wonder. Angkor Wat, Forbidden City. I'm gonna have to start actually planning these out because there are too many. Alhambra, we get a super government. Should we get a super government? I think we should get a super government. That'd be fun. It's that time of the game where we can start building our chemical societies. These things actually give gold based on the adjacency of my campuses. So I kind of need to focus on getting them in the good cities first. And they get production as well. <laughs> really good buildings. I don't normally build universities this quickly. So having a secret society that really focuses on getting good universities that's hugely powerful. It's got to be Warlord's Throne as well. We're doing a lot of conquering, and I don't see that stopping anytime soon. Another city taken. Fascinatingly, there's no direct way through to Byzantium other than through Fez. So that's the way we're going to have to push. I don't mind that, really. We have a large army on the way. A very large army. And I could actually cut out an industrial zone here if I wanted more troops. There's Hanging Gardens. 15% growth rate in all cities is nothing to be ignored. It's wonderful. It's very, very handy. Just a little bit more food everywhere. A little bit more 
population, and as we all know, population is key in Civ. Now on to Kilwa, and a Seador will probably be used to rush Kilwa, I'm thinking. There are some really cheap wonders available. I guess I could use it on something like Colosseum. That wouldn't be too bad an idea, you know? Buffalo. Ooh, that's actually not a bad idea, although I don't have anywhere near enough population for that. No, I'm just going to use it on what I've got at the moment. Sometimes the foil of a good game is just over planning. I'm just going to run with it. What's this city state? It's 2% culture for every great person I've ever earned. That's going to be quite a few. More alchemical societies. I'm thinking I dumped all of my envoys into the city state. But Fez is probably the one I want to grab. I've been pillaging it like crazy. And that's actually been quite funny. But once I've done pillaging, I don't want to take the city state over because it would generate an emergency. Although nobody could join in on that emergency. So maybe I do. But now I think actually getting the extra two science in every university is too important. Oh, Elsid, That's a really handy great general. There you go, my muskets have all got an upgrade now. There's Warlord's Throne, and it will retrospectively give every city 20% production, because within the last five turns, I did take this city. We'll often forget that, but it's a funny way around of doing it. Now, what's my second tier two government plaza gonna be? Do I want the spy? Do I want to be able to buy things with faith, or do I want the city-state levying? I'm gonna go for the city-state levying, because I have a lot of city-states, and they have a huge amount of army between them. 300 gold from pillaging the aqueduct. I almost feel me. I'd like to point out, but I don't feel mean. Almost is the key word there. There's a siege tower. Probably should have built that a little bit before, but never mind. Almost there. Military science. Line infantry. Oh, it's good. Kilwa. Three envoys when built, plus the two from the Apadana that sat right next to it. Very handy indeed. Plus, this capital now has 30% production towards buildings. It's got 30% production towards units, and it's got a whole heap of other stuff on top of that. It's lovely. Do I just keep building wonders? It's very tempting, isn't it? This city is forbidden is it? Nah, I'll build it anyway. Oh, well, that's a lot of crossbows. Hello. All right, well, we're going to need everyone all working together here to break through this crossbow line, but I've got basically infinite units, so I'm just going to keep doing that thing where I just keep charging in a direction until something works. Um, I've also got a great merchant. Trade routes to city-states, give me faith. I'm tempted to save this for economics, so I shall. Yeah, I've just got so many random great people just waiting around. Okay, I do take significant significant damage from crossbows. Oh, that almost wiped a musk <laughs> to zero. I'm tempted to think that we should fall back just a little bit and lure them out, but that could be easier said than done. I might just have to sacrifice this musket there, which will of course spread Byzantium's religion. Is that a bad thing? It's not really a bad thing. There you go. Now I've crossed. Pull my great general through. Now I can make an attack. Okay, so that's two units dead. That's not bad, you know, especially because reinforcements are just on the way here. Monumentality is being removed for invention. I have a lot of workshops and I want to get all of these engineering points. Remember this, I'm on 15 per turn. 26. That's a nice boost, I think. All right, we're holding firm for now. We're holding firm for now. But there is military science. There are some big upgrades coming. Oh yeah, line infantry. Ta-da! Because I've got the great scientist there, if I just pause with this musket, it should be able to absorb a huge amount of damage and then heal it all up in a second. This knight has basically pillaged everything from Fez it's going to. As soon as I get envoys, it's going to steal that city-state back. Now where am I going to go? Industrialization is very handy because factories and coal power plants give me new units, which is really cool. I could race to infantry. That would take me through economics. I reckon industrialization is probably the way I'm going to go. So we'll head that way for now. A bit more production in my capital. There we go. I built myself a plus three holy site just to use Hildegard. You see, I remembered. I haven't made a religion yet. I haven't felt the need. No one is anywhere near a religious victory. I can't think of anything that would be useful for me right now. So I'm just saving it there in case of emergency. I can always make a religion a little bit later. Oh, that was a tagma. That was tagma. Oh, by Byzantium has gone into what I like to call we mean business mode. Do I want to let my alliances renew? That is another good question. I have this huge army that sat around doing nothing. Should we just go invade Vietnam because we can? Yes, I think that's the answer. We're going to just keep doing this thing where we always have everybody in an alliance apart from one person. There you go, here's the military alliance up and running. But now we've got the option. Now we've got the option to move our army forward and to upgrade it and generally be a bit of a 
pain to the AI. Oh, build a university and library in this district. That's really good, but it's the extra science on each university that is really, really handy. Now, I've actually built a lot of universities already. One, two, three, four, five, six. This one's already almost complete. I'm just going to use Newton immediately. There's no university I can actually rush through, which is unbelievable, but I was on 160. Now I've got 173 science. I like that. That's good. Oh, and I just, oh, I just found one. I just found a campus without a library and now can we go? That's my fault. That's my fault. That's what happens when you don't check. Okay, here we go. Pull the siege tower in. We can go one attack, two attacks, three attacks, and four. City's mine. Now, holding this city is a whole other question. That will be tough, but Victor, get in here as quick as you can. Has the city got a district? It does. It's all holy sites. Come on. Can we please do something useful in these cities? This is going to be a good test of Vietnam here. Vietnam could join in on this military emergency, but will you? No, they voted against it. Oh yeah. I probably could have let that go through and then had infinite loyalty on that city. Thinking about it, that might have been the clever thing to do, but never mind. You know what? Invention is fun and serfdom is fun and raid is fun, but there's other things we can do, such as professional army. For inquiry, I'm going to finally put it in and Mandala State. There's a huge chunk of gold and culture. Keep an eye on these yields. Keep an eye on the yields as they all get reprogrammed. Oh, yes. Oh, that's good. That's good. If I just check in on my campus districts, this is a good example. We'll take the one in my capital. So it's giving me six science, six gold, but then I'm also getting another six gold from the Alchemical Society. And then we're getting science now from the commercial hubs and the harbors and things that we're building. Oh, this is lovely. And there's foreign ministry. Bit more diplo favor, but we can now levy troops from city states. I think Constantinople has to be taken in order for the loyalty to pan out here. So I'm going to move my units forward. And here we go. Line inventory. Yes, 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 yes. All of the upgrades, all of the time. Fortunately, my great general is no longer applicable, but we'll pick up Gustavus fairly quickly. And okay, the encampment will be officially shredded. I just gave Victor Garrison commander and that's bought me another two turns on this city, which I think is all I'm going to need. Let's try and break through this encampment quickly. There's one attack. There's two. Excellent news. Constantinople. Yeah, I know there's a Tagma there, but I'm going to attack my, you know, El Cid's not very useful anymore. So I'm going to create create a core out of my level two line inventory. Actually, we need to name it as well. Welcome, Lord Pauly. You are, I, I want to say this kindly, a bit of a battering ram, and I need you to take Constantinople. Oh, Imitap. That's the sound of me getting instantaneously distracted. That, however, is mercantilism. Let's see how much of a resource we need to get a monopoly. We are on seven of 13. Five of 13, five of 13. Oh my Lord, we're so near to all of these monopolies. Spices. Spices is the best bet. What have I missed? What have I not upgraded? There's one below Fez. That one's upgraded. There's one there, one there, one there. Okay, some more settling needed because I've actually upgraded all the other sources, but there's so much between me. I was looking at these beautiful achievements. I have a tradition of industry. I have William H. Seward's legacy. I'm going to finish controlling at least one opponent's capital. I still need to make a city that's ecstatic. So actually my capital does need a theater square. We need to monopolize at least one plantation resource, but we're almost there now. Let's give old Ursa more grievances just so I can watch the world burn. And let's produce units faster because that tends to be what happens. I don't have the voting power to influence anything that goes on here, by the way. So I'm just siding with the things that I know are going to win. And that's how you remain in charge of diplomatic victory even when the world hates you. Okay, we can hit Constantinople once and in comes Lord Pauly like a tiger. Oh, that's a big hit. That's a big hit. Constantinople will fall next turn. And I have more reinforcements on the way. Of course I do. And actually, two industrial zones are going to get finished over here. I need to pop monumentality back in in a second. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that briefly just so I can chop these little cheekies out. It's the cheap way of doing it. Go on. Go on, Lord Pauly. Wabam. The city is mine. Oh, and I can build a workshop here. Oh, that's fun. 200 science, by the way. Yeah, that's fun. Also, so much cavalry, so much line inventory. I'm just sending the second army round and we're going to attack Vietnam from the coast. Might take me a while to get round, but you know, this is the sort of thing I do in the background. Here is Forbidden City. One wildcard policy slot. This is again in my capital. Look how beautifully straight that aqueduct is. Normally they're bent. That's really, really straight. I love it. Am I right to be building right next to these ley lines? Probably not. 
not, but I'm doing it anyway. Oh yeah, Jabal Barkal. I had Emotep and I'm just getting some classical era wonders and this one was quite funny. I think it's giving me 20 faith per turn or something like that, which when you have monumentality, 20 faith per turn is awesome. This is a wonder I very rarely build, but I really like it. Irene of Athens, it is good to meet you. Unlike the other, I will use you immediately just to take that governor because I fancy Magnus. Also, I think Magnus is going to be quite useful in this game. Ha 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 ha. Oh, and that was a huge burst of envoys there. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's old Yoinkacles on Fez. Thank you so much. Let's get Auckland as well. That's another wildcard policy slot in my government. What am I even going to put in here? Let's whack in Mandala State again. I kind of enjoyed that for the yields. Oh yeah, yields are big. Tagmas are only strong if you bring them around in packs, friend. We know that. You should know that. Hey everyone, it's me, Ursa. I made Petra. It's got food, it's got gold, it's got production, and most importantly, it's in the middle of a city with a Luru. Yes, it is officially what I would like to call filthy. Oh, look at this city, that's so good. Philadelphia, you need to grow faster. Lord Paulie says, I'll take that. And Oracle, yummy. Am I devastating the local wildlife and biodiversity just to print industrial zones that get me happiness and more units? Yes, yeah, yes, that is exactly what I'm doing and I do feel a little bad for it. My army's spreading up into too many directions now, so there we go. We've officially retired my medic, but I think that's in the long run what we need. Imhotep's second creation, Colossus. It's like the Statue of Liberty, but it's older and it fell down really quickly and it gives me a trade route, which is really nice and it's flaming. Look at the flames. I like the fact they start the flames before the even thing is finished. Ah. Uh beautiful. It's time to pick up some good traders though. Washington, a lot of internal traders. I want to just pump this city full of food. They're not very helpful to be honest. One more city. Falls. Excellent stuff. Actually, we might be able to just take Odessa just maybe with some naval invasions. Not quite with naval invasions, but close. Oh, capital has a military academy. Emily, what bonuses will we get today? Sanitation, steam power, ballistics. Odessa, it falls. Temple of Artemis, each camp, pasture and plantation within four tiles of it get an immunity which is great because I've got a lot of plantations and pastures in this area that was the third Imhotep wonder excellent let us see what the world will send to us now oh Dido is in a golden age everyone else is in a dark age oh this could be bad all right so Vietnam has lost a city over in this direction this time and that's a big loss for the Ottomans oh I reckon they're on the edge of losing some significant cityage now keep an eye on it keep an eye on it. Steam power for more embarked movement because my army, it has almost arrived. Plus I levied Singapore's army because I can just upgrade it really cheaply as well, which is nice. Oh no, I lost some of my cards. Okay, reformer coinage isn't very useful. Sakdina isn't useful either. So we get to actually use some of my older cards now. Republican legacy, I always enjoy that card. Limes I'll get rid of. Professional army is in. Retinues is in as well. We'll upgrade these troops as soon as we can. Is that Byzantium out of the game? It most certainly is. Oh Oh no, what a shame. Just Lincoln being Lincoln. I think there may be some barbarians to go and claim with Boudicca. Let's see what hall I can bring in. I forgot I was building this. And call what? This is in my productive triangle cities. One population in every city, one housing in every city. That pushes Washington to 15. That's a lot of pop. Oh, we've got factories being built pretty much everywhere. Here, here, here. We've got loads of coal. I forgot to mention, I have like 12 of it coming in, which is really, really handy. That is under mine. I just built my capital. Wonderful. That's under a mine. That's under a city. There's loads around me. This is a really cool map. A really cool map. There's loads of stuff. Hey, decent haul. Yay. There's steam power. The factory. Well, that's just another line inventory. We'll get the coal power plant running now. Shipyards, amphitheaters. My capital is just enjoying life. Marco Polo, free trader in the city. Yeah, go on then. I'm not even bothering with corporations. I mean, I might as well just enjoy what I've got, you know? Here is a city and I believe leave that's a sprawling empire but also is it a monopoly i don't know if it is a monopoly you know seven out of 13 i think we may have actually had something flood or something no matter we're gonna go and work this other source of spice all right sorry vietnam we've been a very very good ally 
I've waited for this day for a long time. What? The treachery. My army just sort of arrives and thus we, we have some fun. This, this should be a relatively amusing invasion. Oh no, no, there we go. There's the monopoly. It just took a second. So there we go. We have monopolized at least one plantation resource. The spices. There's another city-state. Hong Kong. It's a good thing I have enough envoys to immediately become suzerain. Wonder construction. Oh, don't mind if I do. I always forget just how strong Vietnam is on woods and hills and all these sort of things. Things. Plus 10. Luckily for me, I think I'm in a good position here. Let's get the cavalry to attack once. We'll go two, three, and I think that's the first. Oh, not quite the first city, but that's fine. The cavalry will finish it off. How bad's the loyalty? Minus 22. That's a good start. Victor, in you come. More smoke, more machinery, more coal, more army. This invasion so far, it's going pretty well. Just pushing our units forward slowly, but methodically. I think that's Vietnam's capital taken. Oh, yes. Delightful. I had an absolutely massive lake in my empire, so I built Huey. I, I'm kind of quite proud about this, but you know what? As proud as I am of this massive Huey lake, it's not the most proud I've been this turn. No, no. Let me show you exactly what I mean. It's the University of Sankor. I built it right where I was going to build a coliseum. Did you get my fake? I faked you all out. <laughs> of course, I was always going to build the University of Sankor. It's the best wonder. I automatically win. I've got the Sankor victory. Huzzah! Well, look. Economics was in Sankor. And chemistry. Well, there you go. Galileo gives me a thousand science. There's scientific theory, economics we're just about to unlock, then replaceable parts. And then we get infantry. Without an oil cost, everyone. Without an oil cost. You might think this is your city, but I like to think it's it's my though. And another one down here as well. Oh, that's a big chunk of loyalty penalty. I think it might be this city kicking it out. Oh, no. Nope. It's just me. Oh, I love Da Vinci. That extra culture from workshops is huge when you're playing Germany or Abe Lincoln. There's something about building a wonder next to another wonder. There's Patala Palace in my capital. I really am just chucking out these wonders now and this increases the size of my government even more. Look at that. Liberalism. I reckon Raj. Raj will be nice, says the Brit. 323 science. Replaceable parts, which means we now have better farms, but more importantly, infantry. 75 strength. And if they're produced for three using my Emancipation Proclamation, they don't take any oil. No oil at all. This is where, when I start to look to upgrading troops very soon, I need to keep an eye on these abilities. If I don't have the plus five combat strength and this unit does not require resources when created or to maintain, in brackets Abraham Lincoln, they don't get upgraded because they will take oil and that would be a pain. Plus, I think even if I've got that promotion, unless I'm mistaken, I still need the oil to actually upgrade the unit. So it's basically going to be new units that get that buff for now. The choice is either to beeline satellites, just in case mechanized infantry is what I need, or to beeline refining for the oil. I'm going to go for oil now. It's always better, I find, to be slightly oily if given the chance. One city, two cities, there we go. I am not going to bother finishing off Vietnam. I think the three cities are going to do that quite kindly. Instead, my alliance with the Ottomans expires in three turns. So I'm going to move my army in the other direction. How about peace? Oh yeah, they'll give me peace and they'll give me that last city because it technically is not loyal. I love when the AI does that. Oh no, is this one up to the north? I didn't even see that one. Fair enough. Minus eight, plus three. They may get knocked out from loyalty. We'll see if that works. I don't know. Anyway, a turn. That's where we're headed now. I build something else next to the suspiciously straight aqueduct of Washington. Alhambra, one military policy slot. Most importantly, it's a tile that means you can't make any of your allied units fortify correctly on the tile. It always asks you, oh, what do you want to do with this? because of the defensive bonus of a tile. It's one of those little things that has always annoyed me. But there you go, native conquest. I don't need that anymore. I do need retinues. No, I don't. Change my mind already. I need professional army. And where's raid? There's raid. Lovely. Another great general, I believe. Joan of Arc does hit industrial units, which I think is line of injury. Yes, she's brilliant. Okay, I have an actual second great general that will be of use. Look at this, just random army. Oh, I'm just waiting. Two turns until my alliances expire. Hey, us. Uh, the AI asks, what are all these units? To which I go, silence. Just to get my units nice and ready as well. Auckland has a huge army to the north of Carthage slash Phoenicia. So I'm going to just dump a couple more envoys in there, which gives me another coal boost as well, which is lovely. And then levy the military for 315. It's really not much. City states, always fun. Oh, look, it's an infantry. It's my first one. Do you know, it's not my first one. There's multiple. They're all appearing. It's lovely. I tell you what I'm going to do now that I've got national 
metabolism. I will start coring my units, not because I necessarily need to, but because it's a lot less to micromanage when you have fewer troops like this. Hey look, a route from my capital to the University of Sankor. I did it, I did the meme. Might as well take advantage of these beautiful three cities and the fact that I've got a depredation cavalry. There's refining. How much oil did I get? One source. You have got to be kidding me, I have so much land. 29 cities. Is there really only one source? No, there's 27 sources on the map, but it's scattered perfectly away from my land. <laughs> All right, a lot of it is settleable though, like a lot of it. I, I can do this, this is fine. Especially with monumentality. Settler, over you go. Well now that I know I've got loads of oil, yep, I'm just gonna beeline to satellites. It is not a sensible or optimized move that, but why not? Here we go, both people are suddenly like, hey Ursa, what's going on there? And I say, don't worry about it. I'm even gonna lie to them just to really, really rub it in. Now we may find that my gold economy plummets slightly here. Huh? You know what? It's it's worth it. I was on 186 gold per turn. I had to that's clearly going to fall away. I had 178 coming in for deals and Vietnam's only giving me 21 per turn. So yeah, we'll watch that collapse. So I'm going to unleash my cavalry in advance into Ottoman land and just go and find everything, go and pillage it whilst I bring the rest of my army to this three city, which I'm going to try and steal before the loyalty brings it back. It might be quite difficult, but I think we can do it. I have competing ideas as to what I do for the Phoenician front. I think I'm just going to sweep and attack Carthage first because it's an easy opening, but I could go to this city. I don't know. Renaissance wars are beginning to appear and I want to get in there before there's too much trouble. So we'll just invade with as many troops as we can as quickly as we can. In fact, actually, I, should we just make ground landings everywhere? Let's just make ground landings. Everywhere. This is like a proper naval invasion, a Hearts of Iron style multiple units being supported on multiple fronts yeah this should be quite should be quite good so my great general i tell you what i'm gonna do just lurk in the sea allow yourself to get boosted by as many attacks as you can oh that was a big one that was a big one okay and now i'm not gonna need any more help then i'll, I'll join in with this invasion as this siege tower comes in but yeah no i think these troops are, are they're pretty powerful i built taj mahal i can't remember why i think it was because one of my industrious cities just needed something to do and i was like like, why don't you do this? And, and there it is. Yay! Basically no Dark Ages for the rest of the game. Perfect stuff. Oh, it's got a complete wall around it. That's so rare. Normally there's a big hole in it. Is that Carthage falling? Nope, not quite. Lord Paulie do the honours. Thank you so much. Hmm, this city seems to have Renaissance walls. What do we do in the face of Renaissance walls? That's right. Pointlessly attack them until we slowly, slowly degrade them. It's possible when your army is this tough. It's always a little bit embarrassing when you get the era score for your first naval unit on turn 152 from a great admiral that's um well that's a shocking display of just not building any boats or game fair enough the World Congress is possibly going to put melee troops on plus five. I really hope that goes through. Go on, you know you want to. Full chaos. Full chaos. Yay, melee. That's another plus five. That means that all of my melee troops that I'm spawning for three are now plus ten. That, that's wonderful. That's exactly what we want to see. One city taken there and two cities taken there. Keep and keep. I think the loyalty is going to be nigh on great. It is nigh on great. Wonderful. On to Istanbul we go. Oh, 132 damage in one attack from this. That's, that's ridiculous. San Francisco is incredibly disloyal, but here's the thing. It's settled on oil and there's another source of oil there. I can start to think about upgrading some of my best troops now. I've unlocked research labs and pretty much every single one of my major cities are now building them almost instantaneously. My science is about to spike in a big, big way whilst this line inventory is just taking a city by itself. In fact, this one has as well. You just need a single core and it, they can just ransack enemy cities. It's wonderful. My first few upgrades. Here we go. So there was radio. That is the film studio, which I will build in my capital, which is ecstatic. I just need to finish the game with all of those things being true. You know what? I don't normally do this, but I'm going to avoid food growth where I can. Hopefully the population will stall and this city will remain relatively easy to keep happy. I'm at zero luxuries, so this should stay ecstatic somehow. We'll see if, see if we can get that to work. This renaissance walled city has finally been claimed look at that excellent now on to the Phoenician capital and I think I'll celebrate by making 
my first army. Oh yeah, that's got a lot of power. Can we take Istanbul this turn? One, two, three attacks, and oh, the cavalry might be able to do this, you know? Nope, not quite. The city remains on four health. Next turn. Next turn. There's the film studio. Here is the city of Bursa, which of course we are legally obligated to rename Bursa Ryan. And there is Istanbul, which again, we are legally required to rename Constantinople. Now, you may go, Ursa, you've spelt this wrong. You've put an M in it. It's Constantinople. No, no, it's because I already own Constantinople. So, you know, it's a small spelling mistake, but it's deliberate. And at this point, I kind of, I just, I'm refusing to bring siege equipment. I'm just hitting the walls over and over with my units. Kind of because it's fun. Actually, no, I do have a general that could make a bombard. I probably should do that. Let's, let's go and do that. Is this going to be the turn to do it? Let's find out. One attack, two attacks, three attacks, four attacks. I don't even need the fifth. Tyre will fall. And currently, my capital has a film studio and is ecstatic. That, ladies and gentlemen, on 1000 AD is a turn 161 deity domination victory. And I just got the achievement. Yay! So let's just have a quick look at all the rules and all of the things we had to do. A tradition of industry. Done. Will William H. Sedward's legacy. Done. Reconstruction efforts. Done. Appomattox Courthouse. I did control at least one opponent's capital. I controlled them all. And an Oscar for Daniel Day-Lewis. Yes. One city that is ecstatic and has a film studio. Easy as you like. Actually, you know what? I just, I just enjoy playing Lincoln. I realise I skipped off all of the end turn graphs there, but you're just going to have to imagine that I did really, really well. I tell you what, the science play, early game science play in this game was what I think won it for me. The amount of early campuses I put down all around plus three. Getting those libraries up. I think one of the first great people I ended up getting was Hypatia, the library plus one. That really gave me a solid basis. And as soon as I got adept alchemical societies, I really started pumping out gold and production and science. And I had, what was it, 100 by turn 106, 107, something like that. And then of course there was Cree. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Easy pickups, all using my unique man at arms rush with some horses to back it up. Nothing the AI can do about it if you get it really early. That's why focusing with science on Abraham Lincoln at the early game is really important for you. Didn't quite get to the P-51 Mustang. I was trying, but I won the game too quickly, as you normally do. There you go. Here's Washington, by the way. Plus five with the film studio. From there, this army went across to Vietnam whilst I built a, a whole new army just from the heavy industry in my capital and sent it this way over to the Ottomans. All of my Byzantium troops, which again came from all of the three heavy industry troops that I was sending down there, they got sent to Byzantium and then we went across. Should I have brought siege equipment? Yes, but I was just getting lazy because I had so many of these units, like about 92 strength. When you can just march them up and immediately do 105 damage to a city, there's no point in worrying about the little nitty gritty of siege equipment. No, you don't need that. Imagine if a CAD was in the game. Oh, that would have been so much better. I had forgotten just how powerful Abraham Lincoln was. So, so good. The quantity of three units, 2,400 military strength and I barely built any myself. Yeah, good to know. Very good to know indeed. As mentioned, Discord is the place to go. Down in the description of the video, I've put links to the challenge if you want to give it a go, and I've got the save file for my attempt on Discord if you want to have a go as well. It has been an absolute pleasure, but I, Bursa Ryan, I need to go. I have another series to get to, another video that will appear right now, so keep watching. Never stop watching. Abandon all hope. There is nothing, nothing but Civ 6 and Ursa Ryan content. See you later. Goodbye! And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Clint Hennis, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Davalek, Skeptical Bear, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Rom88, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Boyzoro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedge, Mushkin Mandeltort, Ezri Dax, Debel Time, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Dr. Bobby, Polar Waller Bear, Mixamatosis, NTG Golfman, Victor McPupster, Indigenous 68, Technology Poet, Teddy Zursa. Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye!